The librarians um, want to talk about what's happening right now with COVID and global climate change and Ukraine, not on the detail of what's happening because we already know that. But um, what was it 25 months ago before there was a pandemic when I was in Mexico, it was um, I think early February of 2020 when the librarians first started saying this is happening they gave me a vision and that vision included and i said it in the live stream with uma the vision included you know the global pandemic rioting in the streets countries rising and falling revolutions and it was multiple revolutions and um of course the global climate change and all of this, they said, will keep escalating until humanity comes together as a collective to work together to heal everything. There have been a few times when they've had moments of excitement thinking, you know, humanity's coming together. Uh, one was the, uh, the Women's March when uh trump was first in office and you know what was so amazing about the women's march is that it was it was a began as a little thing but it took over the whole world every city in the world had a sister march happening even where my mom was in san miguel mexico the parque juarez was filled with people there. And it's not like they had internet or they were streaming or anything. They were just there to give support to the DC Women's March. It was in every city in the world on this one day. And on this one day, crime all over the world re dramatically reduced. And I forget what, there were a few other things that happened that were amazing. And the librarians were really excited. I even did a live stream when I got home or maybe it was the next day about how uh, the librarians were saying, this is our chance, humanity. We had that feeling for once of what it's like to be a collective where we are each our individuals and yet we are sharing a global mandala, a connection. We are one and we are also uniquely individual and we are in our small groups and we are in the, the global group. And we have one purpose in general. We may have different passions or connections or reasons or tasks, but there was one general purpose that was washing over our planet. The librarians were so exciting. They were convinced now that humanity had a taste of what it's like to be a three-dimensional living collective, that we would keep going forward for more and more and more. But then we dropped the ball. And there have been a few times since then when there have been moments when the librarians have gotten excited saying, now you're going to do it. And every time we've dropped the ball. They are so excited about what's happening at this moment with the whole world coming together to support Ukraine. I think many of us are frustrated that there isn't more support coming to Ukraine faster, but it is happening. And also the courage of the Ukrainian people. You know, when you see a mob of general civilians of all ages and capabilities swarming in front of tanks to stop them and pushing against them to try to like force them backwards. And, you know, when you see everything that is happening there, and when you see the people who are coming forward to give support, and now finally, you know, the articles are saying, hey, the global climate change needs to be reversed. You know, we need to change things now because everything is, the things we said were gonna happen in 20 years are happening now. And, you know, for like, for all of this to happen and for now, like the companies say, we're sharing COVID medication, we're sharing COVID medication recipes. We wanna to come together and help with this. The librarians are actually very excited because they think 
they're hoping, like their fingers are crossed that if humanity comes together to change global climate change, to change the COVID scenario, to bring democracy forward and to bring the rights of the people. I mean, not just democracy, any uh, form of government that supports the will of the individuals, you know, empowers the people and that we're coming together to share those who have sharing with those who need. If we can keep going forward with this, then we are on that path to the beautiful future that the librarians are calling to us from. Um, so I haven't like put us onto YouTube yet because I wasn't sure if anyone had questions. And you know, when we're not streaming, I know you you're like I can post this part later. So if anyone has questions, feel welcome to ask. Your image should not pop up. But um, when we're in this time that we feel is so dire and we've been like really morose, despondent, beaten down, now they're showing this is what's coming of it. So who, who wanted to speak? I wanted to ask a question, mm -hmm. which is, I think it's great that the librarians say this. If if they would talk about, so what is it that we can do as individuals to help? That would yes. be great. Thank you. That is exactly what they want to talk about. <laughs> and, Bonita, and I have a, I'm sorry. I, I do have, oops, have a question. Um, I remember back when you were channeling all this and, and you had some predictions, some dire predictions actually. And I was wondering how we're coming along because you did, you know, the channeling message was that if we came together, it wouldn't be so bad. And, uh, you know, there was one of the predictions was that many, many, many people were going to die. Mm -hmm. So and many people uh, are dying. Yeah, but not to the extent that, that the predictions, I think they said up to 35% of the world's population at one point. They said one, one fifth. Third. One, one fifth. fifth. So that would be about a billion people. Um, it's not just from COVID, it's things like um, with the global climate change, there's new species or varieties of mosquitoes occurring and people are getting dengue fever and dying from it. Um, you know, and so there's just like, as I said, it's not just from COVID that so many people will die. It is from everything. You know, we have uh, all the people who have become displaced because with the global climate change, their lands have become, you know, a place that's no longer hospitable for life. So they've become homeless and boat people and refugees. You know, this is an area looking at what's going on in like Syria and Afghanistan and, you know, countries that are where there is high levels of poverty and very little support and aid coming to them, seeing what's happening in the Ukraine right now. Um, the rise in homelessness, the rise in starvation, the rise in, you know, the flooding. Um, what was it the other day on the news I was watching, they said within, what was it, 30 years by 2050, if we don't reverse the global climate change, the ocean level will go up by like one foot. And the ocean level up one foot doesn't mean anything that's two feet up will be okay. It means like huge amounts of land are going to disappear. They're just going to be totally flooded. And the librarian said to me, in 30 years, no, it'll happen within 10. It's already happening now. 
And then the next day I was watching a, a news documentary on glaciers and how a lot of glaciers are now, they assumed that they were just melting from the top surface going down. But because of the heat, a lot of glaciers are getting cracks. And where you have cracks, you get heat going into the crack, which creates melting and water. And then the water flows through. So a lot of glaciers already have like huge melted areas underneath. So they're melting from the bottom going up. And the librarian said to me, we told you it's already happening. So I think they're right. There's going to be a lot of death on our planet. Um, all the fires that are happening in Australia, the West Coast here in Brazil. Brazil has lost an insane amount of their tropical rainforest to fires, which sounds like, like that can't even happen. And yet it has, and it continues to. And all of these forests, you know, and all the melting glaciers put out a lot of methane and CO2 into the atmosphere, which just speeds everything up. So yes, uh, I believe the librarians are correct. There will be a lot of death oh. and a lot of suffering. I also have a question. I'm wondering what is so significant about like this push on Ukraine? Like so many other countries have, um, gone through atrocities like Yemen. I mean, nobody said a word about the Yemenese people starving yeah. to death so brutally. And yeah. all of a sudden, since it's happening in some, I can't help but to say more white. familiar kind of people, mm -hmm. meaning white Anglo-Saxon kind of people, all of a sudden everybody's sympathy is like firing up. I, I, I don't understand that why I mean, is this, do you think they can address that? Yeah, I'm asking the librarians right now because I just want to be clear. Yeah. What they're saying is, okay, so there's a few things. One, yes, systemic racism is a part of this. Um, two, Okay, they're saying that Putin um, pushed his authority too far. Um, and one thing, like they pointed out to me, all of the politicians in DC who were saying, oh yeah, no, Putin's like really awesome. Putin's a very strong leader. Uh, most of whom are Republicans and I'm not making a political statement. That's just what is these people are already in his pocket. He has been in the process of buying our country for some time. And so for the democratic nation, for our democratic leaders, for Biden to be able to hold power in his office, he needs to bring these people down. And additionally, um, for the first time in, I don't know, since democracy was a thing, democracy was in the minority of governments around the world because there have been so many dictatorship takeovers of countries. And um, so, Part of what makes Ukraine so important is it's a reclaiming of global democracy. And it's the first time global democratic leaders are saying, yes, we need to come together. Otherwise, we're going to be the dinosaurs. And part of it is, um, and I believe what's happening in our country is a bit the same that's happening in the UK as well and other countries that there are people who are in deep power who are in Putin's pockets. And this is a way for countries that claim to be democratic to purge that out by supporting the Ukraine. I think also that, you know, people are, um, 
the Ukraine, I don't know how to express this. This is coming from me. It's not from the librarians. They're doing such a great job of letting the world know what's happening and they're showing such spirit. They will, they are undaunted. They're going to hold on to their uh, rights, even if it means that the entire nation will die fighting for it. And they've made that clear. And that's the kind of thing that a lot of people will respond to. They're not, when they're asking for help, they're not asking, come and rescue us. Uh, they're saying, we need you to help us because we will fight until death. And we would rather fight and win than fight and die. And that is a very, very powerful message that they are doing an amazing job of broadcasting. They've already shown what with that whole Trump, Hunter, Biden bogus thing that as a country, they have a policy of, you know, at least publicly, I don't know any of their politicians personally, publicly showing integrity. We would rather lose a great deal of money already promised to us than be corrupt and bow down to corruption. So there's a lot there, Nazi. Um, the librarians feel like this is a trigger point. They're coming in saying, I'm good at putting out all these great words, but I'm missing the crux of the matter, which is, okay, they're saying like, think in your life times when you are just like caught in a bad situation, you're making bad choices or you made a bad choice and committed to it and you will not step away. And bad thing happens to your life after bad thing after bad thing because you won't go on until you hit that one trigger point that you're like, yeah. oh my God, that's it. That's a straw that broke my camel's back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something has to trigger the whole humanity to, to have that movement. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, if not this one, we keep saying, oh, it's this one. Oh, it's this one. Oh, right. here's the trigger. Um, it's going to be one of these it will catch on. Yeah. And the librarians are saying, look at this. We had, you know, the women's march and they felt like, oh, that will be it. And that was like a very gentle standing up and, and that didn't work. And then, you know, on and on other things. And then COVID and that didn't do it. Global climate change, that didn't do it. And finally, wow. like everything is in crisis mode. Everything seems out of our control. And then here's one thing where people are saying we're claiming control for our lives for ourselves and that may be the trigger point the librarians are hoping that's the trigger point to change everything yeah the domino yeah. that can <laughs> yes and you'll notice Ooh, in the good, good book title the I domino like that can. <laughs> but you'll notice, though, at this moment with Ukraine in the news, you're seeing more and more of the, the forgotten news, the ignored news of yeah. other places around the world right? that are right. being brought back to our attention. And it's very personal. The way this guy is like broadcasting every day, it's as if he's talking to his best friends, you know? Um, you're seeing it firsthand what's going on behind the front. Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. It's, um, I worry, <laughs> I don't want anyone to be mad at me, but at the same time, the librarians are determined this must go forward. And we're the ones talking with them, so we must take it forward. Uh, you know what they say, if you see it, you own it. And um, we all are insightful, so they feel like it is our responsibility to go forward.